The word mafia originated in Sicily. However, its exact origins are still uncertain. The Sicilian adjective for mafia is mafioso and mafioso in Italy. This word roughly translates into the meaning swagger. However, the meaning of this word can also be taken in other perspectives like bravado or boldness. When referred to a man, mafiusu can be referred to an individual in Sicily during the 19th century who was highly ambiguous. It used to signify a bully, arrogant, proud, enterprising and a fearless individual. Sicily was once an Islamic emirate. Therefore, it can be said that mafia could have Arabic roots. The association of the word in terms of public appearance can be regarded as the presence of a criminal secret society. This was inspired by a play in 1863 named as the Mafiosi of the Vicaria. The words mafia or mafiosi were never mentioned in the play. However, they could have put in the title of the play to add a local flair. The play is about a person from Palermo and a prison gang associated with him that have the similar traits to that of a mafia. They have all the elements like a boss, an initiation ritual, talk of umirta, code of silence, and pizzu, a code word for the extortion of money. The play proved to be a great success in Italy. Soon after this, the use of the term mafia began to get widespread and had also started appearing in the early reports of the Italian state. The word mafia made its first official appearance in 1865 in a report by the prefect of Palermo named Filippo Antonio Gualterio. As years advanced, the term mafia had become a generic term in association with a criminal organization or network with similar structures, methods and interests. Giovanni Falcone, who was an anti-mafia judge, was murdered by the mafias in 1992. As per the turn codes of the mafia that is referred to as the Pentiti, the real name of the mafia is the Cosa Nostra that translates to Our Thing. An Italian-American mafioso named Joseph Valacchi had testified before the Parliament Subcommittee on Investigations of the Senate Committee on the United States on Government Operations in 1963 that was referred to as the Valacchi Hearings. During that time, it was misunderstood that it was a proper name that was fostered by the FBI and disseminated by the media. The FBI even added the fact and article to them as LA to the term. Therefore, it was now referred to as the La Cosa Nostra. However, in Italy, the article La is not used when referring to Cosa Nostra. The First Mafia War Giaculli Bombing The Giaculli massacre had occurred on 30th of June 1963. This massacre was the result of a car explosion by a bomb that had exploded at the location of Ciaculli. Ciaculli is an outlying suburb of the Palermo. This massacre had resulted in the killing of seven police and several military officers who were sent to defuse the bomb. This event happened after a sudden phone call that was made to the police station. The bomb explosion was meant for the man named Salvatore Greco Giaschiteddu. He was the boss of Sicilian Commission of Mafia and the head of the Mafia family of Ciaculli. Mafia head named Pietro Toretta was regarded as the man who was behind the explosion. Ciaculli massacre had been supposed to be the climax point of the bloody war of Mafia between the rival clans who were present in Palermo during early 1960s. This has been referred to as First Mafia War. The second one had started quite early. The Second Mafia War was meant for the purpose of controlling the profitable opportunities that were subjected to the fast urban growth as well as the illegal trade of heroin to North America. The ferocity of fighting was quite unprecedented. The struggle had raped around 68 victims during the time of 1961 until 1963. Preceding Events during the time of the 1950s, mafias had developed an active interest in the urban property, construction of public sector, land speculation, transportation for commercial purposes, along with the wholesale markets of the fruits, vegetables, meat, as well as fish that had represented the developing city, Palermo. 
The population of this city had risen to about 100,000 during the time of 1951 as well as 1961. The relationship between the new generation politicians who belonged to the Christian Democratic Party or Democrazia Cristiana and the Mafia leaders known as the Mafiosi was interconnected to Tommaso Buschetta, Angelo Barbera and the famous construction entrepreneur named Francesco Vassallo. The politicians of the Christian Democratic Party were Salvo Lima and Vito Giancimino. During the period of 1958 to 1964, Lima was the mayor of the city of Ciancimino and Palermo was the assessor of the public works. This was later on known as Sack of Palermo. In around a period of five years, around 4,000 building licenses had been signed. At least more than half of these were signed as names of three pensioners who maintained no connection or relationship with the construction work at all. The boom in the construction, later on, resulted in destroying the green belt of the city. The majority of the majestic villas had been replaced by blocks of apartments. First War of Mafia The First Mafia War had been sparked by the small quarrel over the lost shipment of Hiren, as well as the killing of Calcedonio Pisa, who was the ally to the Grecos. This had happened during December 1962. Grecos had suspected that both the brothers, Salvatore Barbera and Angelo, were responsible for the attack. Giaculli massacre had transformed the war of Mafia into a war that was against Mafia. This had attracted the first ever combined efforts of anti-Mafia by the local state along the post-war provinces of Italy. In a period of 10 weeks, around 1,200 mafiosi were captured. The majority of them were kept out from circulation to about five to six years. Sicilian Commission of Mafia had been dissolved even for those members who had managed to escape the arrest. In them, Tommaso Buschetta and many others went to Argentina, United States, Venezuela, Canada and Brazil. Salvatore Greco Chiquitedu had then run away to Caracas located in Venezuela. This outrage had accelerated the Parliament of Italy into the implementation of a law that was passed during December 1962. This law was passed for constituting an anti-mafia commission that was achieved for the very first time on 6th of July 1963. A final report of this commission was submitted during 1976. Possible Perpetrators as per Tommaso Buschetta, when he was a cooperating witness during 1984, this was a person named Michele Cavataio, who was the head of the quarter of Acqua Santa in Palermo, who was held responsible for the bombardment of the Ciaculli massacre. Cavataio lost of the Mafia clan of Greco in the war that was of the wholesale market during mid-1950s. Cavataio had killed Pisa on the pretext that La Barberas will be held conviction by Grecos. This would result in a war. He kept accelerating the war with various other bomb explosions and killings. Cavataio was given support by several other families of Mafia who had opposed the increasing power of Sicilian Commission of Mafia to the harm of the individual families of Mafia. Cavataio was murdered on 10th of December 1969. He was killed at Viale Lazio, located in Palermo, for the purpose of the retaliation of the events during 1963. This was achieved by some mafia group or squad, which had included Calogero Bagarella, brother to Le Luca Bagarella, Fernando Provenzano, Emanuele D'Agostino, Gaetano Grado, along with the boss of mafia of Riesi. This attack has been referred to the Massacre of Fiala Lazio and also as the Massacre of Lazio Street. Various top Mafia heads had decided for the elimination of Cavataio upon the basis of instigation of Greco. He had come for the subscription of the theory of Buschetta about the beginning of First Mafia War. As per Buschetta, the inclusion of the hit team or squad had been a quite indication of the fact that the murder was sanctioned jointly by the major mafia families of Sicilian. It not only included Calogero Bagarella, who was from Corleone, along with a member of the family of Stefano Bontane in Palermo, but also an army man belonging to Giuseppe di Cristina's family as another part of Sicily located in Riesi. 
this bloodbath of Viale Lazio had indicated the conclusion to a Pax Mafiosa that had regained since the massacre of Ciaculli. Victims The major seven victims of this massacre were named as Eugenio Altomare, Silvio Corrao, Mario Malusa, Calogero Vaccaro, along with Mario Farbelli from Carabinieri, along with Pascal Nuccio, as well as Giorgio Chiacci from Army of Italy. Second Mafia War The Second Mafia War has been considered to be a conflict in the Sicilian Mafia that had mostly taken place from the time of 1981 up to 1983. However, the first shots were fired in 1978. Still, some killing had resumed till the end of the time of the 1980s. This incident had involved more than 1,000 homicides. The Second Mafia War had also been considered to be as the Great Mafia War, or even as the Matanza, the slaughter. This consisted of the complete Mafia clan and had properly changed the balance of power in the organization. Adding to the violence that was created in the Mafia organization, there was additional violence or riots against the local state also. It included several campaigns of instant assassinations of prosecutors, judges and politicians. As a result, the war had resulted in the major breakdown against the local Mafia that was assisted by the Pentinti. In addition to this, Mafiosi had joined with the authorities when they had lost several friends and family members in the fighting. As a result of this, the conflict had helped in the blowing off the matter of privacy of the Mafia. Preceding events The initiators of the Second Mafia War had been considered to be the Corleonesi. This was a Mafia local family in the town location of Corleone. However, they were also assisted by several other families of the Mafia. All of these hailed from a tiny rural local town. The new Corleonesi had also been termed like the Peasants. In Sicilian, they were referred to as the I Vidani by several other families of Mafia, especially with help of the influential urban bosses in the Palermo capital. During the time of the 1960s, things had begun to change to the Corleonesi, had started to grow in reputation and power. This was achieved under the rule and leadership of the ambitious and the brutal Luciano Lecchio, who advanced to become the boss of Corleone in the Mafia world through the crude, still the effective and useful method of just shooting the previous one named Michele Navarra. During the time of the 1970s, the world of the Mafia in the Sicily had regained its normal business when the world of Mafia trials during 1960s had ceased with some convictions. Some primary rivals of the Corleonesi were named as Stefano Bontade, Gaetano Badalamenti, Salvatore Incerillo. These were the bosses of the various influential Palermo families of the Mafia. This Sicilian Commission of the Mafia was again established during 1970 along with the involvement of the Badalamenti and Bontade who had made up the two out of the three leaders of the Mafia Commission. Third person was the Lecchio. Though he was symbolized by Salvatore Rina, Leggio took himself in hiding along the mainland of Italy. The time while Leggio was arrested during 1974 and was captured for murder, then Rina took over soon as the head of Corleonesi along Bernardo Provezzano. Corleonesi had begun to get over the allies among the other families of the Mafia. The families who had set themselves along with Corleonesi included the Palermo bosses like Giuseppe Carlo, head of Porta Nuova, Rosario Ricobonno, head of Partana Mondello, and Filippo Marchese, head of Corso dei Mille. It was in 1978 that Rina had managed to expel Badalamenti from the Mafia Commission. But Lamenti was alleged of having organized and planned the murder of Francesco Madonna, who was the head of Vallelunga and the alliance of Corleonesi. Therefore, but Lamenti was executed from the Mafia Commission and even from Sicily. His location was then taken by the godfather Ciaculli Michele, the Pope. He was also linked with Rina. Rico, in addition to Carlo, Rico Bono and Marchese, had kept the membership quite secret from Incerillo and Bontante. 
It was in the year 1978 when Rina had achieved for the assassinations of Giuseppe Calderone, Giuseppe di Cristina, bosses of Catania and Riesi. Both of these men were the allies of Inzerillo and Bontante. Even their followers were the linkers of Rina when he could sponsor them. As time passed, the heads of Palermo along with the men were eventually left alone. The Top Mafia War on 23rd of April 1981, Bontanda was shot to death by a machine. After several weeks on 11th of May, Inzerillo was also murdered in a series of bullets. Several associates and relatives of the duo had subsequently vanished or killed without any trace. It also included the 15-year-old son of Inzerillo, who was murdered in a vow to take revenge of his father's death. On 29th of September in that year, a man named Calogero Pizzuto, who was an ally of Inzerillo and Bontando, was also killed in a bar that was situated by two ignorant bystanders. Only Badalamenti had survived by going away from Sicily after he had been expelled by the Corleonesi in the 1970s. Several additional killings occurred over the series of the next two years. On 30th of November 1982, around 12 mafiosi were killed in Palermo within 12 distinct incidents. The assassinations had extended to the regions of the area of Atlantic. Under it, one murder was that of one of the brothers of Inzerillo, who was found murdered in New Jersey when he had fled to the United States. The murdered body of the nephews of Badalamenti had also been found in the fields of Germany. Amongst several hitmen who were at the service of Corleonesi and its allied clans included Giuseppe Greco in Ciaculli. In addition, he was a worker of the Ciaculli society that was controlled by the uncle named Michele, aka the Pope. However, this clan was mainly at the service of the Rina. Giuseppe Greco has been suspected to be the main culprit of the killing of around 80 people on behalf of the Rina, with an ace shot of AK-47. This killing included that of the Inzerillo and the Bontate. Greco had guided the death squad of several hitmen. Some of them included Giuseppe Lucchese, Mario Presti Filippo, Filippo Marchese, head of Corso dei Mille. All of these took part in the murder along with a young nephew of Greco named Giuseppe Marchese, who was later on arrested in 1982. Another famous assassin named Vincenzo Puccio had slipped the wall because he was imprisoned for the year 1983. During the time of 1981, as well as 1983, there had occurred as many as 400 killings of the Mafia in Palermo, as well as an equal number of gains in Sicily. In addition to this figure, there were around 160 instances of mafiosi and the vanishing of their associates. This was referred to Lupara Bianca, that is the Sicilian version of White Shotgun. The body was entirely buried or destroyed that was never again found. Corleonesi, along with its allies, have been the much-needed victory of the war who had suffered some casualties. One of the causes for this was their innate secrecy. While most of the mafiosi lived in a quite public environment and had put up the personality of being respectable individuals, Rina, Leo Luca Bagarella, Provenzano and several of their killers had lived their lives as fugitives. They were seldom seen by other mafiosi, not even by the public. The reason that many heads had joined themselves with Corleonesi without informing their mafiosi had supported the campaign that the Allies had resumed to misplace the faith of the enemies of Corleonesi. A major example had taken place into the war. This involved six members of the Mafia families of the Inzerillo and Bontade were called for a meeting along with a supposed friend. The friend allied with Corleonesi along with four other individuals who were never observed again. Someone who had not gone along with them was Emanuele D'Agostino. He had become suspicious and therefore, along with the son, he took refuge with the oldest allies of Pontade. He was Rosario Ricobono. He also allied secretly with Corleonesi. As a result of this, D'Agostino and his son got removed. The single one to survive out of the six mafias was named Salvatore Contorno. He had then survived an attempt of murder and had then gone into hiding when he was arrested by the local police. 
When he was on the going, Contorno had transmitted several letters to local police as he gave out important information in relation to the war. It was quite impressive to the local authorities which had a negligible idea of what was exactly happening with all the murders just like the losing clan. Mafiosi had remained quite naturally secretive. At the tenure of the Second Mafia War, the local authorities had remained in a loss in understanding the accurate accusations and motives behind the Mafia War. For instance, the time of the murder of Bontade, it was for a while that the local police considered that he was murdered as an attempt of cheating by Incerillo. This remained their belief till he got killed. The deliberate amount of wrong information was deployed by Colonesi. The time when Incerillo was killed, it was quite a spark for murder by as much as three years in progression about Giuseppe di Cristina. However, the fact was that Corleonesi had killed Di Cristina, who had been constantly doing this in the territory of Incerillo, in order to defame him. War against the state of Italy As the Mafia of Sicilian was more aligned to the killing of the authoritative images than the counterparts of American territory, there was still just as the final resort. However, Corleonesi, along with the Allies, had initiated a particular campaign for the assassination of the main figures. The event had started during the time of 1977, along with the murder of the Carabinieri Colonel Giuseppe Russo. This had resumed till the 1970s and even in the 1980s. In the victims, who were known as the excellent cadavers, included the police chiefs Boris Giuliano and Emanuele Basile, politicians Piola Torre and Piersanti Mattarella, along with magistrates Cesare Terranova and Rocco Cinicchi. A team comprising of anti-mafia prosecutors including those of Paolo Borsellino, Giovanni Falcone and Antonio Caponetto had laboured to organise a concentrated effort towards the combating of the mafia as well as against the rising trend of violence. It was also aimed at the transfer of heroin, the control of which was after the war. The war that was against Mafia clan had caused in Maxi trial of 1986 as well as 1987. During this period, several mafiosi had been accused of a long list of criminal activities. Many crimes and investigations had begun during the time of the 1970s. However, a great amount of the charges was linked to the Second Mafia War. Several defendants, including Provenzano and Rina, had been accused in absentia because they were on running at the time of their trial. Therefore, the trial was considered to be quite important as various mafiosi who were on the non-winning portion of the Mafia war, like Tommaso Buschetta and Salvatore Contorno, took the position and had justified in contrast to the previous fellow of mafiosi. The results came to be referred to as pentiti. Continued violence As the year 1982 came to an end, Corleonesi, along with the Allies, were all but from being triumphant. With several existing members of the previous clans switching and surrendering the responsibility to the victory side, it could be said not a big deal. However, the murdering did not end. The Corleonesi had decided to leave the key Allies. It started with Rosario Ricobono as he was murdered with around 20 of the associates, including even friends, in late 1982. This was then pursued by Filippo Marchese as he was suffocated and then dipped in acid in resemblance to several other of his associates who were murdered at his hands. This violence had dragged into the late 1980s. Because of this, the treachery was caused by Corleonesi and its intent to ensure the leadership across the Mafia. Marchese and Ricobono were removed towards the beginning of 1983. More murders had followed that primarily involved the Ciacculi killers like Mario Presti Filippo, Giuseppe Greco, Agostino Marino and Vincenzo Puccio. These people had transferred sides from that of Bontandes to that of the Rinas. These men were responsible and quite not valuable to Corleonesi across the first half of the time, around the 1980s. This event had raised several additional murders. 
However, between the time of 1985 as well as 1989, all of them were murdered on the order of the bosses of Corleonesi. The bosses observed them to have outlived their resourcefulness and usefulness and had seen them as quite ambitious. Therefore, they were considered to be a threat and were subsequently murdered. Two brothers of Puccio, along with mafiosi, were also killed. After these series of killings, again, the local authorities had been largely unaware of the occurrence of the recent events that were occurring in the Mafia world. This was the case unless they had been given assurance by Francesco Manoia, who was a brother to Agostino Manoia during October 1989. This man was in prison during the time of 1985. He was arrested for the trafficking of heroin. But he was informed up to recent date about the series of events by Agostino as he used to visit him regularly. As per the claims of Francesco Manoia, who was his brother, named Vincenzo Puccio, along with two brothers of Puccio, were murdered after it was discovered by Rina that they were conspiring to outrun him. Both Mario Pretisfilippo and Giuseppe Greco had been apparently slain as they had become too ambitious. The information provided by Manoia had been verified in 1992 by even more Pentiti. This included Giuseppe Marchese, Gaspare Mutuolo, along with Leonardo Messina. In contrast to the Pentiti, during the time of the mid-1980s, all of these men had been on the victory side of Second Mafia War along with the previous allies of Corleonesi. All of them had complained about the same aspect. It was with respect to Rina, along with other heads of Corleone, had banished or eliminated the good allies. This happened as they became of no particular use or were perceived as a great threat. It appeared that the resulting way to live by referring as an ally to Rina was that one had to perform exactly what he had asked out of them. In a guided interview that was conducted with Borsellino during the year 1992, Messina had summed up this by claiming that the bosses of Corleonesi had used the members to eliminate all of those who had proclaimed their heads. This included individuals such as Giuseppe Greco, Mario Pretis Filippo, the Shoe, as well as Vincenzo Puccio. All that has been left are individuals who have no character or who are there as puppets. End of the era of the 1980s The main result of Second Mafia War was the winning of Corleonesi along with his head, who were Bernardo Provenzano and Salvatore Rina. By the time of the mid-1980s, these men had become the charge of the greater group of Mafia and towards the end of this decade, following several allies that had been eliminated in arrest, they had formed an effective leadership of the organization of crime. The end of the decade was concluded by Salvatore Contornoa, when asked about the loser or winners of Second Mafia War, had declared that the losing and winning clans do not exist anymore as the losers do not exist. The Corleonesi had killed all the losers. Castellamarese War Castellamarese War has been considered to be a bloody struggle for power over the power of the Mafia of Italian American. It happened between the portions of Joe Masseria, the boss, and of those related to Salvatore Maranzano. This was referred by this name due to the fact that Maranzano that was based along the Castellamarese del Golfo, Sicily. The faction of Maranzano had won as he had declared himself as the boss of all the bosses. As a result of this, an undisputed leader had become the boss of the complete mafia. However, the man was soon killed by another faction that was led by a man named Lucky Luciano. Lucky had aimed to establish a power-sharing setting referred to as the Commission. This consisted of the group of five Mafia families which had equal stature so as to avoid any wars along the future times. Background The Mafia activities in the US were managed by Giuseppe Masseria, Joe the Boss, in the 1920s. The faction of Masseria mainly consisted of several gangsters from the region of Sicily as well as from the regions of South Italy including Campania and Calabria. The factions of Masseria included Albert Anastasia, Mad Hatter, Charles Lucky Luciano, Frank Costello, Vito Genovese, Willy Moretti, Alfred Mineo and Joe Adonis. 
Powerful and influential Sicilian mafioso named Don Ferro had planned for making a bid to control the mafia activities in the US. From the base that was located in Castellamarese del Golfo, Salvatore Maranzano was sent to take seizure and control the situation. The faction of the Castellamarese in the United States included Stefano as the undertaker, Joseph, Joe Bananas, Bonanno, Joe Aiello, and Joseph Prothact. On an outward aspect, Castella Marese war had been considered to be between the teams of Maranzano and Masseria. However, on the underneath layer, there was an occurrence of the generation issue between the leadership of Sicily that was referred to as Mustache Petis, for the distinct long mustaches as well as the ways of the old world and the team of young Turks that was a more diverse and younger group of Italy who had forward and intellectual thinking and were accepting to work even with non-Italians. Disputes and tensions between Masseria and Maranzano had been quite evident from the primitive time of 1928. It was always accompanied by the one side of the group constantly hijacking the alcohol trucks of the other. However, both the factions were considered to be quite fluid and had several mobsters who were constantly killing their own allies or switching side during the war. Beginning of the Hostilities in February during 1930, Esper Bonanno, Masseria had ordered the killing of an individual named Gaspar Milazzo, who was a Castella Marese native and president of the Detroit's chapter in Unione Siciliane. As per the reports, Masseria had been insulted by the refusal of Milazzo in providing him support in the dispute of Unione Siciliane that involved the Al Capone and Chicago outfit. However, as per most of the sources, it has been revealed that the opening term in the war was fired in the faction of Masseria. On 26th of February 1930, Masseria had ordered the killing of the ally named Gaetano Reina. Masseria had given this job of killing to a lively lad named Vito Genovese. He murdered Reina with the help of a shotgun. The intent of Masseria was to provide protection to his private allies, including Dominic the Gap Pterilli, Tommy Gagliano, and Tommy Lucchese. Later, his cheating had returned to haunt as the family members of Reina had then thrown his support towards Maranzano. Trading Terms on 15th of August 1930, Castella Marese loyalists had banished a key enforcer of Masseria named Giuseppe Morello in the East Harlem official setup of Morello. In addition to this, a visitor named Giuseppe Pariano had also been killed in this execution. It was two weeks later that Masseria had suffered another great blow. After murdering Reina, Masseria appointed a man named Joseph Pinzollo for taking over the task of the ice distribution racket. However, on 9th of September, the family of Reina had shot and murdered Pinzollo on the Office of Times joining forces with Castella Marese. It was no longer that Masseria soon took action back. On 23rd of October 1930, an ally of Castella Marese named Joe Aiello, who was the president of Unione Siciliane of Chicago, was killed in Chicago. At that moment, it was assumed that some other ally of Castella Marese named Capone had murdered Aiello as a result of the bitter struggle for power in Chicago. Luciano later confirmed that it was Masseria who had ordered the killing of Aiello and that the killing was enacted upon by an ally of Masseria named Alfred Mineo. The Turning of the Tides The murdering of Aiello had outraged a rage of war in the favour of Castella Marese. It was on 5th of November 1930 that Mineo, along with an important member of the gang of Masseria named Steve Ferrigno, was also murdered. During this point of time, the members of the gang of Masseria had begun the reacting to Maranzano. This resulted in the rendering of the original battles of the issue that was between the Castella Marese and the non Castella Marese. Quite meaningless. On 3rd of February 1931, another significant lieutenant of Masseria named Joseph Catania, who was gunned and died after two days. 
Under the consideration of the bad situation, allies of Masseria, including Genovese and Luciano, had started talking with the leader of the Castellamarese, Maranzano. The two men of Masseria had agreed on betraying Masseria when Maranzano would put an end to this war. On 15th of April 1931, Masseria got killed while he was having his dinner at an island restaurant situated in Brooklyn. The attackers were presumed to be Genovese, Anastasia, Benjamin Siegel Bugsy and Joe Adonis. However, as per the reports of New York Times, the police was unable to understand what had actually happened. As per the reports, Masseria was sitting at the table and he was playing cards along with some other men. It was then he was fired on from his back. He died after the gunshots that were aimed at his head, chest and back. The autopsy reports of Masseria have revealed that he died with an empty stomach. There were no witnesses that came forward. However, the men with whom Masseria was playing cards were seen exciting the restaurant and entering onto another stolen car. The New Structure of Mafia As Masseria was dead, the war got over. On the paper, the winners of the war were declared to be Maranzano and the conventional faction of the Castella Marese. Now, Maranzano had taken some time and major actions for avoiding any further self-destructive and bloody wars, gang wars. Several such changes imposed by Maranzano are still into action till today. Except for the New York City, several urban areas in Midwest and the Northwest have been organized into a single family per city. Because of the small size of the organized crime occurring in the New York City, it has been organized into five separate families. The heads of the five families of the New York City were Profacci, now Colombo, Luciano, currently the crime family of the Genovese, Maranzano, now Bonanno, Galliano, currently Lucchese, and Vincent Manganno, currently Gambino. However, all of these families would be owing allegiance as well as their tribute to the Maranzano. Castella Marese, like the Bonanno and the Profacci, were divided into the crime families of New York City and they had stopped to exist as an individual entity of function. Maranzano had set himself apart from the crime families of the United States with the creation of an extra position that is referred to as the boss of all the bosses. Each single criminal family was intended to be supervised by a particular boss. The boss was supported with the help of an underboss. Under the underboss, the crime family was bifurcated into several crews, each of which was assisted by a capo or a capo regime. The families were also employed by soldiers who also referred to as the wise guys. The army soldiers would then be supported by another set of associates that were not even members of the families. The associates could have included the non-Italians as well who had worked with the crime family. This would include Benjamin Siegel Bugsy and Mayor Langsy, to name a few. Like Siegel and Lansky, the associates could have been considered as the major criminal figures who had their own organizations. The reign of Maranzano as the boss of the bosses was quite short-lived or termed. On 10th of September 1931, he was stabbed and shot to death. His killing occurred in the Manhattan office with the help of a team of trigger men by Jews who were staffed by Lansky. The trigger men had included Bugsy Siegel, Samuel Levin Red and Bo Weinberg. After the hitting and killing of Maranzano, it was believed that there would be a massive step of the traditional mafiosi and the night of the Sicilian Vespers. The rumors were later on confirmed by feedback of Joseph Balacchi. However, on later research or study, it was found that there were no significant signs of any such massive occurring. In the end, the conventional factions in the New York City of the Mafia had lost the resulting war. The real winners were considered to be the more ruthless and younger generation of the mobsters that were guided by Luciano. With the gaining the power, the organized crime became poised to be expanded into truly multi-ethnic and national combination. The mafias have been a strong group or community of people who have had a major role in determining the drastic history of mankind through different stages of life. The members of the Mafia group have been the role models to display unity to their groups and could even sacrifice their lives for their group or community. 
However, the mafias have led quite a distressed and blackened life when it comes to the constant threat from the other leading mafia groups in the world. Owing to such threats and disturbances in the mafia community, there have been significant mafia wars in the history of the mankind. Several mafia leaders came, fought, lived and went by. Even to this day, the world of the potential and powerful mafias exists in the world. We all hope for a peaceful future together with no upcoming mafia war as in the past.